show. Charles from Pearland, Texas has a question about some cabinet paint. He's looking for that everlasting paint, Tom. Oh, you know, yes, we all yes. are. <laughs> Charles writes to us, what is the best paint to use when refinishing kitchen cabinets for long lasting durability? And I know there's, there, you know, oil or, an, you know, you know, enamel or, or latex, right? These are the choices, but man, that one's more complicated. Having been the son, a grandson of a painter, I know that that oil-based enamel is much harder to, to work with than, than the latex, but which would you recommend, Tom, in this case? Okay, I'm not sure I, I agree totally with that comment, Charlie, if you're experienced working with oil or latex. You know, it's different, but I don't think it's that much more difficult. But let's go a little tongue in cheek now today in the standards, because my grandfather was a painter too. And, and when you're talking about old painters, Charlie, they used to mix the color right on the job. They put lead in there. They had the good stuff. That was the longest lasting paint in the world. And those paints were probably harder to work with because you had to be a lot more experienced than you do today. Everything's kind of thought out for you. But the best paint, if you could do a cabinet, you wanted the longest lasting paint in the world, and you wanted to have that thing finished in a, in a factory somewhere, Believe it or not, you'd use an automobile paint, which is about 100 to $200 a gallon. Who knows today with after all the prices going up. But unfortunately, most people don't want to spend that kind of money. But I'd love to throw that out because people don't realize a car is painted too, but look how much longer it lasts than, say, your home or your cabinets or anything else you buy. Uh, powder coating is also a great way to go, but not on cabinets. But when it comes to paint in a home, if you're painting cabinets that are already there, there are certain things you stay away from just because of the fumes, like lacquers. Lacquer undercoats are what we use in the new construction. We'll take the wood cabinets and all of the wood, the baseboards, the doors, the cabinets are all sprayed with what's called a lacquer undercoating. And that is more difficult to work with, but it's also really has a lot of fumes and very toxic. You have to wear your respirators and things. And usually when people are living in homes, they're not going to do that. So the oil bases are usually used for woodwork in cabinets. And that is because they're a harder finish and they just give you a more flat, they level better and give you a more uniformed uh, surface on there. When you get into latexes, they're because latex is a name, which is a water base. It's a rubberized paint. It has uh, it doesn't level as well, so you have to add some leveling compounds in there, like some Floetrol or something, to level those paints out. But unfortunately, they're going to be what people will be using for now on because oil-based paint, especially after COVID and the supply chain and all of the problems we're having, they are phasing out oil-based paints very quickly now. So unless you're doing a factory finish, whether you get into some of the real high-end commercial paints and you're doing it in your house, most of the paints today are going to be latex paints on cabinets. That's just the bottom line. So what's the best? You, nobody's ever going to be able to say this is the best. Every manufacturer has a better, uh, what is it, a good, better, best type of paint like they used to do in the old days. You always want, you get what you pay for, buy the best paint. The manufacturers like Sherwin-Williams, Pratt & Lambert, uh, Pittsburgh, and, and Benjamin Moore, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. They make very competitive lines of paint. So when you go in there, Talk to the paint store, not the aisle nine guy, if you can avoid it, if you really need some information, get the spec sheets and buy the best paint you can for the project. Are you going on raw wood or are you going on pre-painted wood? There's a lot of factors that come in play for the preparation. The painting part's actually the easiest. Our grandfathers had a real advantage yes. with their paint that it had a better color because it had it lead did. in it. And it lasted, That's the what color held lasted the color. longer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I remember my and grandfather cussing, cussing out when they stopped putting lead in the paint. Of course, he, he yeah. essentially, you know, his decline was fueled by his ex, his uh, contact with lead all the time. But um, even yeah. so. And, and the thing about well, that latex yeah. paint, you know, we, we painted uh, some cabinets one time and used latex paint. And we made committed the grievous sin of using those cabinets too quickly. Yes. When well, Charlie, I think what you're getting at is that you have shelves. Right. You have somewhere you're going to put your pots and pans, your books. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an open cabinet. You start loading. Oh, it feels dry. You start loading everything up and you walk away. Two months later, you pull one of the books off the shelf. And you get to the bottom plate and all the paint stuck to it. Because it takes about 30 days or more for that stuff to reach the hardness. They'll tell you, oh, it's just as hard as oil. They forget to tell you it takes 30, 60 days 
to cure to a point where it's got that hardness. So you've got to be really careful. And then, you know, walking up against it, nicking it with your clothes, banging it with your watch or a ring on your hand, you'll chip it. And latex, you can't just sand a little spot and touch it up. It's really difficult to repair. So when when you get into painting and you really want a nice finish, my my suggestion, and, and Charlie, I go, we're going to go back to the grandfathers on this one, get a professional like Rudy or something who deals with it every day because they're going to be able to know exactly what paint they're using, how it's going to perform, and educate you on the process down the road because mm -hmm. it's not as easy as, hey, it's dry, let's move on. It's yeah, not I, like that. I didn't paint. mean to throw you a curve in the way I put that. I figured I thought you were following what I was saying about the, the curing of the paint. Now that enamel paint or the oil paint, that you would use mm -hmm. oil-based paint, it'll cure faster, won't it? It'll cure faster. Uh, it'll get a harder finish very quickly. And if you do nick it or something, it's so hard, you can just sand the area and feather it out and then touch up the little area to, to blend. Uh, the problem with the oil base is the color doesn't match over time because most, most cabinets are going in the white or the lighter colors and it'll start to change its color from lack of light. So if you open a cabinet door, the inside of the door will be somewhat yellow. The outside where it gets a lot of light will be lighter so you don't notice it. But when you do open a door from a dark dark surface all the time, they lose their uh, uh, capacity to hold the color, which is weird. There are products they could put in paints to stop that, but it makes it so expensive. And because they make so little of it now, the manufacturers just don't bother. When we had our cabinets refaced by Trifection, Mm -hmm. They use the lacquer. They use that lacquer finish with the, the faux finish on it and everything. And it was, yeah. it was, and they, to your point, they painted the doors and everything off site. And when they came, yeah. they had to spray the kitchen. And they suggested, they said, we're going to do this today. You may want to have dinner out tonight. Because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you'll get you, high, you'll get a buzz, and we did, <laughs> yeah, you will. Because, <laughs> and it might have long lasting uh problems. We don't know, right. most of us don't live that long because, of but course, we didn't listen. So, but yeah, that's <laughs> oh, really? but I, okay. you know, the thing, and I'll tell you, I don't mean to go on so long about this, but having had personal experience of trying to do this, it's kind of yeah. like when you when you when you decide to buy switch plates for your house, you have no idea how many of them there are until you start oh, buying true. them. Right. Mm. And and it's the same thing with painting cabinets. There's so much detail in painting your cabinets that it's really, I think, it, it is, unless you're a real avid do-it-yourselfer, man, it is, this is a job you hire done, in my opinion, because it's just. I wouldn't you know, do it. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's just, man, it's just too much because you get. No, you've everywhere. got to have the right sprayers. You've got to yep. have all the taping and it takes manpower. to. And when you go in, you don't want to brush it. You want to spray most of it. And that's why Trifection took the doors and stuff out, not only because of the lacquer, but lacquer you don't brush. Lacquer you have to spray so you get that beautiful finish on there. It really looks nice. All right. You know what looks nice is when we see your questions in our inbox. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so go ahead and do that. Send us your questions. We'll answer them just like this. We post a new one every day on our YouTube channel and, uh, and of course, at homeshowradio.com. There we go. Um, I had to give the director a dirty look to get back here but anyway we'd be happy to, to see your questions and answer them and you'll find them like i said every day and uh, it, it, by the way if you go to homeshowradio.com you live in the houston area like charles does you'll find our home show pros like in his case rudy's quality painting um, would be the guy to paint his cabinets and if you're looking for anything else we have not only our pros by name but also by category so if you don't you know what but you don't know who you go there and search by category it's all waiting for you at homeshowradio.com